Fifty seven thousand strong scattered out. The reality for the fire service nowadays is that we are going into situations that we're not 100% sure of the outcome or exactly what we're going to encounter. Terrorism at every level, it's a threat of many threats that the fire service has to deal with. We really have to take on what's traditionally been a law enforcement mindset on mitigating these situations. As we look throughout our country and the world in the last decade, we have seen more and more responders being intimately involved with these types of incidents. Seen of this horrific shooting at a Korean university there. Officials say a lone gunman showed up at the Atlanta area elementary school just after noon, armed with an AK-47 assault rifle. These incidents are not confined to big cities. Typically, they happen in small to medium-sized towns. Another sickening multiple shooting in this country. More than two dozen killed. The horror magnified because of the setting. The Sandy Hook Elementary School, here's a perfect example of a, of a community that never anticipated having a tragedy happen. It runs the gamut from the active shooter a suburban Denver movie theater. Apparently, there has been a mass shooting over here. We've seen this in theaters, elementary schools. Panic ensued in Washington, D.C. today as the death toll mounted. And recently, we've seen it at a naval shipyard. On the fourth floor, a male with a shotgun. There's a lot of potential that a person that wanted to commit a crime could do against firefighters and emergency responders at many types of incidents that would tend to be what we would consider routine. Two firefighters were shot and killed after being ripped in arson. Two more down. first responders were shot. We now have to be cognizant that we could be the target of these 911 callers. A disturbance call, a domestic violence call, there's been hostage situations, barricaded suspects. A person who'd been holding four firefighters hostage in Georgia has been shot and killed by police. We believe that their lives were in immediate danger. As we see more and more of these situations occur, we should see firefighters starting to engage earlier on when the situation is somewhat stable. How do we deal with someone who still actively is shooting? You've got victims that are coming out. How do you set up your safety zones? The problem with not having collaborative training in place prior to these incidents, like Virginia Tech, like Columbine, the victims aren't able to get medical help as quickly as needed. It is absolutely vital that firefighters and law enforcement, as well as all first responders, work together before these types of incidents occur. We want to come together and be on the same page and know the expectations of each of us when we respond to that incident. Jack has been instrumental in developing the relationship between law enforcement and fire. The CFS Jack's response to violent incidents is a step forward from the response to mass shootings that we did two years ago. One of the goals of this course is to blend the best of both worlds, from the fire service and law enforcement, and take on the responsibilities and be able to mitigate these situations much more efficient. Based on the facts and based on a very cooperative relationship with law enforcement, decisions can be made to put firefighters in warm zone environments and save people's lives. But by no means are we asking firefighters to go into hot zones or into situations where they feel they're not safe. The reality is these incidents are not going away. If you do not prepare and do not train for these incidents, the chaos is going to be multiplied many, many times over. This training really is a direct, tangible kind of training that can have tremendous results when you're faced with these kinds of events.